Okay, we're on. Uh, right. Mrs. Andresen, can you please give me your full name and date of birth? My full name is Mary Lind Andresen, and my date of birth is June 3rd, 1929. Okay. Can you give us a background on uh, how your family came to come to White Lake and Sylvan Beach? Yes, I sure can. And also the different family names and members that you right. have here. Right. All like right. That. Well, in 1941, my uncle, Fred Morford, told my dad about a piece of land up at White Lake, Michigan. And the Morfords had a cottage on the scenic drive at the time, and their children came up to the yacht club and sailed and did all that. And he said, Harold, you should just come and look at this property. It's totally impossible to get there. There's no road, but I just want you to see the view. So, Dad, we all trooped up here. And we had to go to our neighbors, the Christiansons from Chicago, who were next door, and they let us drive up their driveway, and then we had to walk up the back hill, and we arrived at the top of what we now call our white cottage at the Mulder Hill. And there we were just, you know, we were really quite impressed with the view of White Lake. And everybody said, oh, this is so wonderful, but we, there's no way to get up here. The Lydas were down over the hillside, and they came in by boat. But this property had, had no road. So anyway, we thought about it, and Dad was in the real estate business. And uh, we just decided we can't pass up this property. It's too beautiful. So in October of 41, Dad bought the piece of property, which we now have the white cottage on. The white cottage. Right. And the first summer, we trudged up the back of that hill on planks, carrying all of our groceries, plate glass windows, and of course, Dad had had a piano. So they somehow, plank by plank, trudged up there with a piano. And that was the summer of 42. <laughs> yep. And uh, we quickly entered into all the activities at Sylvan Beach. and. Uh, that's when my career in the jink started and when Dad started to play the piano. Oh, wow. And so I was 13 years old at the time. And uh, it was very exciting to come up here to White Lake, a new area, but I was really shy and they wanted me to go over to the Yacht Club and I think I just went over there a couple times. But then the following summer, then I was never home. I was just lived at the Yacht Club. So that's when it that's when we really got into things up here. But uh, our kind neighbors, the Christiansons from Chicago, made it possible because we, we drove up to their cottage, which was halfway up, and there was a windmill on that hill there. We'd cross over the windmill and get up to our place. And then, of course, 41 December, the war began. No telephones. We weren't able to build a road. We couldn't do anything except sort of what we did ourselves. About, and that was kind of tough on me because I was a teenager then and if a fellow wanted to have a date with me, he had to, to come up our, to our cottage and ask me because there weren't any telephones. Yeah. We didn't get any telephones. Then we finally got the road built and that was a big step forward. That what, was wonderful. Uh, what, uh, what year was the road built? Oh boy. I, 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 I think it was probably 40... 45. It was had to be near the end of the war stuff. I don't. I don't really remember. Uh, s speaking of the war, do you have any memories of Sylvan Beach and White Lake during the Second World War? Uh, any? Uh, well, I have a very vivid memory when VJ Day happened, and that. Can you tell us that? Yeah, that that prompted a a very big expedition uh, in in boats up to the top of Pigeon Hill. And that's one of those <laughs> very special evenings that all our gang will never forget. It was a big celebration. Wow. I can't, yeah, that do was you, VJ do you Day. Do remember wh where you were when you heard that the war come to an end when VJ Day finally took place? Mm, I don't remember. I think it was probably up here, because I think that happened in, uh, in the summertime. Yeah, it was August, is Yeah, right. Well, one time I do remember 
a whole gang of us going up in uh, in Lee Holly's. Uh, he had that wooden boat, the double ender, and we got it. We pulled it up on shore, went up and have a marvelous picnic on the top of the hill, and uh, then we got back down and. It seems as though the rocks had sort of made a hole in the boat while, while we pulled it up. And it was really terrible because we, we couldn't get the boat to sail us back home. So I get someone uh, somehow got to the, went to the channel and somehow got across. I don't remember what happened, but when we finally got back home, there were parents up at the top of the yacht club with binoculars and oh boy everyone was worried what happened to us it was too late for us to arrive home oh, yeah. but we made it yeah oh yeah uh, back to VJ day for a second did you have uh, did you know that VJ day was going to come that soon no uh, they I don't invaded yet the Japanese islands or anything no so? I didn't know when it was going to come yeah. we it was uh, kind of surprised oh yes but it was Cause for great joyous, jubilation. Uh, I'll say so. Yep. Were there many people that you know from up here that didn't come back from the Second World War? Mm, not really. No, oh, I was God. very lucky that they all returned safely. I had a lot of cousins and few relatives in it, but I yeah. was very lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, again, you don't remember exactly where you were, though, when they announced that VJ Day had taken place. No, I don't. What was your first memory of that day? Was when you got in the boats to go over to Pigeon Hill? I think just just tremendous excitement and happiness. And, uh, did you take flags up there and everything? Oh, I think we did. I think yeah. we did Wonderful. everything. Yep. We were all excited about it. I bet you were. Mm -hmm. Do you remember rationing at all up here during the second Oh, year? do I remember rationing? I was, uh, let me see now, that's right. I was in confirmation in the S Swedish Lutheran Church in uh, Muskegon, and I was graduated, and uh, I got some nice presents, and it was, uh, sort of a box like this. And I remember going over to the Yacht Club, and Polly Harkness, my dear friend, had a little crescent boat. Do you remember oh, those? A little boat. tiny thing. It was called the Jupo. And that stood for Junie, Lauren, and Polly Harkness. And the name of the boat was the Jupo. So Polly said, well, I'll sail you home from the yacht club over here. So I was wondering whether that was a good idea, but what the heck. So I had clutched in my present and I had some brand new red loafers. And during the war, we had shoe rationing. Well, uh, you know, big wind came up and about halfway over, <laughs> the Jupo and both of us went right into White Lake and I lost one of my red loafers. So that <laughs> Great tragedy. Oh, God, you're yeah. Well, yeah, I, I was very, very sorry about losing my shoe, but I remember rationing. Oh, wow. Uh, yep. did you, was it hard when you were coming up here to get gasoline? Well, I was kind of lucky in that respect because my dad was in the real estate business, and because of that, he had, uh, I think it was called an E sticker, and uh, he was allowed to get extra gas, more than just the average person. So we, I don't remember. I know we had, we drove very slowly. We could never speed. I don't know what, like, I was really slow. It took us a long time to get here, but. Where'd you come from? Again? From uh, North Muskegon. Muskegon. okay. Uh -huh. And the roads were probably a heck of a lot worse than they are uh, now. Well, no, I think we used to go across uh, Giles and then up Scenic Drive. So there was no problem with the roads. But, um, okay, what other uh, rationing do you recall from that? Well, we food? had, uh, yeah, we had sugar rationing and uh, meat rationing and um, butter rationing and I think those were the main things. But we, we never really, really suffered, I'd say, about rationing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, during this time, it must have been fairly hard to, to date with all the men being off of war. Were there, 
What were the beach parties like? What were the, what, well, was there a noticeable lack of men? Or did see, I was promise? just uh, born in 29, so uh, I wasn't as affected as by that. It was later on in the war. I, I don't know, I don't seem to remember being sad about nobody here. Mm -hmm. There were enough of us around that we yeah. still managed to have good times. Just uh, off the cuff, were there deferments back then for college yeah, students? Mm, I think if you were maybe in the ROTC or what have you. But see, my a lot of my friends went through college and then they like served uh, in the Navy for two or four years. I don't remember what it was, but in a lot of them, yeah, a lot of them did the, the training programs during college times. And then after the college was over, then they were obliged to stay in the service for a while okay. because they were deferred. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were speaking of these years. Uh, what did you do, for instance, on rainy days up here when you were young, your teenage oh, years? Oh, I seem to remember rainy days sitting over in the yacht club and doing things like playing charades. That was one of our chief pastimes. We just loved that. And we, we not only went there, but in the evenings, we had a wonderful gang, and every night we, we would gather. We never had dates, I mean in early days, but we'd, we just all got together and went to somebody's house and uh, just puttered around and but playing charades. That was one of our favorite yeah, pastimes. Yeah. I love that game yeah. still myself. Right? So I so. know. Well, just off the cuff, was, was that game new then? Or had that <laughs> oh, I don't time? think so. <laughs> I think that's one of those old-timey games that our parents and a lot of people played over the years. It's probably the oldest time. Yeah. Well, another thing we, we like to do, of course, not on rainy days, but the, the beach parties were always one of our favorite things. And I remember we used to have those watermelons parties, and they'd put... Oh, little spider. They'd uh, make holes in them for straws, and then they'd put all sorts of brews inside of the watermelon. Oh. You remember those beach parties? Remember down at the Stewarts, we used to have those. Oh, uh -huh. But singing, of course, that was a great, great thing awesome. we loved to do. We always sang around the beach fires. And we, we just loved those old tunes when you wore a tulip and you know all the moonlight bay and all the old tiny things i don't i don't think they do that as much anymore no, i think our my age group was the last one who did that really well i don't know i was going to ask you why do you think that is that that was uh, well i can't that. imagine why because uh unless they just didn't know the songs uh, i don't know tv maybe mm -hmm. Well, that it's could be. To yeah, to, to sort of be together. Well, that's another great thing about our places up here. We don't we don't have any TV, and we just love it. It's, it's so wonderful. Yeah. I I watch a lot of the uh, educational ch channel at home. They have great music and a lot of good things. But I just get along fine up here without the TV. <laughs> it's so wonderful. It really is. You know, we never had a TV either. We used to vote every year and all the time I was in college, high school. Mm -hmm. We never allowed one in the cottage. Yeah. Oh, that's the way we've uh, done it here. And the, ch the children, the grandchildren have survived beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I think so. Uh, you were talking yeah. about the beach parties and the yacht club mm -hmm. and the charades and that. Uh, could you name me your peers? Uh, oh my goodness. I remember being up in a van, big cottage there. Well, Nancy Van Deventer and Judy and Barb and um, well, my great crew over there on the Redhead, Dick Dennison, okay. Doug Partridge, Bill Hodson, and then I 
I was uh, also great pals with the people from Michelin to Tom Getz and Gordon Ainsworth. They were our old gang and uh, the McMurray boys and uh, old Peggy and uh, Peggy Gould and well, there are just so many. I have to think a minute, but you could uh, mm-hmm. Um, well, Kathy and Lucy, they were a little bit younger. Kathy Redmond. Oh, Mary Howell. She was one of my very closest friends. And of course, my dearest, oldest friend was Polly Harkness. And she was a great buddy. Her boat is up there. We used to uh, race together on her sea boat. And uh, we never did too well. It's, we Mottos that rang out often were, when you hear the familiar sound, we have run aground. And <laughs> that was the kind of the say. And oftentimes, we were so far behind that it was hard to hear the finish gun from where we were in the race. But did we have fun? We had the best times. We really did. Nothing like White Lake. No. It's the greatest place that ever was. Water's one soul. Yes. Oh, and oh, and, and Joe Partridge too, and of course Cam Johnston and his brothers Brad and Will. Dear Will, he used to go up to the top of the judges' stand and set off the guns, and then Joe Did Partridge. Will, was Will sick at that time? Yes, uh huh. Yes, right. Uh huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it got progressively worse, but he was always able to. We were always together. He was with us at all times. And then Joe Partridge was the fellow who always did all the most amazing things to entertain us. One of them was to dive off the top of the judges' stand. That was one of his favorite tricks. Oh my! Was the judge's stand set back at that time so that the, he would have to go across the dock? No. Well, I guess it was where it is now. I don't. No, I think it was kind of on the end. Okay. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I remember when, when we were young, it was inset yeah. a bit more, and there was right. There. Right. It was so, on the uh, end. So Joe would be jumping off. Of yeah, the he'd be diving off there. Oh, he was so much fun. We had great times. Is then, he still alive? No. I don't and believe so. Also. Yeah, right. So many. And Bruce Stewart, of course, was a dear friend. And his brothers, Doug and Sam. So there are many of our dear friends who aren't with us anymore. And they're so, still there, though. They're still with us, right, in spirit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there, uh, and there were a lot of, of course, there were a lot of the older group, Lee Holly and Jack Farmer and... Uh, Midge Bain was a sailor, and Barb Wasson, and well, of course Neil Manny he was the sailing king, and of course the Neil young was the sailing king. Oh, well, well, you know he was a great sailor, and the uh, the Youngquist, of course, dear Mr. Youngquist, our dean of sailing on White Lake, and his that son Al. Kind, oh, he was so just a lovely yeah. man. Mm-hmm. Everybody just was adored him. Oh yeah. yeah. And Ella's wife too. Oh yes, yeah, dear was, tiny little lady from uh, England. She was such a dear person. Elsie. Was Elsie. Yes. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she yeah. was very nice. Well, there were so many wonderful people all over Sylvan and the Yacht Club. Did you mm -hmm. all, when you were in your teenage years? You mentioned the watermelon party and putting booze in. Did you mm -hmm. all drink very much, or was it a not? Well, we. It was mostly it was beer, really, right? And uh, no, we we didn't drink a lot. We used to have fun uh, gathering on the back porch at the yacht club for the Saturday night dances and uh, singing out there in the back. I wish the singing would come back. Yes. Well, I think. I think, Joe, that uh, we ought to start that again. I think you're right. I think yeah. You're right. I'll try to get Lisa and Ingrid and their gangs to. Of course, Duff Peterson, he loves to sing. Oh, does he? Oh, yes. He plays the guitar, too. I didn't know that. 
uh, that's what you need too. You need a guitar player. Yeah, you're right. Someone strum to along with you. Else. Yeah, Something like right. This. I it think uh, that's the thing we ought to promote here at the lake. I agree. It was always yeah. fun, and it's been lost. I'm really surprised to hear that. It is has been well, kind of... Well, as I of, said, our group was uh -huh. the last that even attempted it. Mm -hmm. so, was, uh, of you course, music became discordant, I guess, to a certain extent. Well, that's another thing. It probably may, makes it hard to sing, too. Yeah, the, the tunes of the day aren't things that you'd really be able to sing much. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah we right. started in the 60s and the hippies and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Started okay with the folk music and that. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's great, the folk music. Oh, I love that. That yes. was my favorite. That was mm -hmm. to me the most mm -hmm. fun. Yep. Um, so there wasn't very much drinking or anything like that. You didn't have drugs or anything. Oh, no. There was no Oh, marijuana. we were so lucky that we were not involved in any of that stuff. No. Well, another Another uh, family that moved in uh, was with the, with the Rice family, of course, with Dave and Ginger and Rosemary. They were all still around here. Yeah, yeah, so, it's so wonderful to be able to come back here and see your old buddies you've known since you were 16. Yeah, you don't many places like that. There aren't, there aren't many. There aren't any. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what are, we're on the social aspect, what, is, what do you feel are the biggest changes in Sylvan Beach and in White Lake uh, since, uh, since you were young, socially mm. or whatever? What changes? Well, you know, <laughs> I think that is the wonderful part about White Lake. I can't think of any really major changes around here. We we have a, we have new buildings. We have a new Wob Club, and we don't have the the dock anymore. We don't have Sherman's Ark, and but basically, I think White Lake is 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 basically the same as when I came here at thirteen. I think that's the wonderful part about it. Are there more? Uh uh, changes? Should I take that? No, 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 no. Are problem. there more? Cha uh, oh, not more changes. Are, 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 are there more parties uh, than there used to be? More cocktail parties? Are things more uh, official? More dress up? Um, oh, I think if anything, they're more casual. Casual, than which is great. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it just seems that we go on with our old gang. Um, the Gills, I have to add Jerry, Mary Gill there, and um, I told you the Johnstons and and Peggy and H. Close, and uh, we just seem to be going along. And Mary Ann and Jim Kettler, Mary Ann Johnson, Mary Ann Davison, I should say, uh, they're wonderful friends too. We just sort of seem to go on with our old boating parties. We just took the Gill's boat down uh, to Muskegon and went to the BLT and had dinner and, and had, came back on the boat. I mean, we still we still do the same kind of things we did 40 years ago. Oh, that's it's so great. That's it's so wonderful to have your old buddies and friends still around who were there at yeah. the time. Yeah. Yep. We feel I feel very, very lucky to still be able to come up here. Oh, it's a blessing completely. Right, because I come pretty far from Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. yeah. But uh, moved down there in 1970, so uh, I lived in Cleveland for 11 years. So it seems that's the great thing about this place. It seems no matter where people move. Texas or East Coast or West Coast or, or Europe or wherever. Yeah, yeah, I love it. My girls, they're they're both. They wouldn't miss White Lake except Ingrid, of course, had her new arrival this arrival, so July, so she couldn't make it this year. But. That's understandable. Right. 
you were talking about your family. Would you tell us a few things about your family? Your, first of all, you have a family business and your husband, I guess. Yes. Can we you tell us something about sure. your Sure. Uh, my husband, Jorn, was from Denmark. And he was not Well, I was uh, singing and dancing in a, a summer stock a theater in the round in Cleveland uh, called the Music Carnival. I lived in New York at the time, but I came out there for the summer, 18 weeks uh, schedule. And they told me when I tried out audition in New York and hired me, I, I, I couldn't believe anyone would pay me to sing and do the things that I love to do so much. But they said, well, uh, you have a day, uh, one day off a week. So uh, I thought, well, I suppose I can survive. It sounded pretty rugged. Uh, but it, then it turned out that the, the show went on seven nights a week, but I had one day off. So for 18 weeks, I, <laughs> I, was, I was learning a show for two weeks in the, in the daytime, and then seven nights a week performing. Oh Only you had one... <laughs> Well, I've got minimum, of course, <laughs> but, but the only, I had one night off during that summer, and that was spent at White Lake, Michigan. Um, you and my boyfriend at the time drove me up here. We drove all night. It, it was because there was a, we were doing Peter Pan, and they had a matinee, so if, they had a, if we did a matinee, then they had to give us a night off, because we weren't, we didn't, we weren't required to to perform two times a day. So right after the matinee, we hopped in the car and drove all night, got up here, and I spent that one day, and then I flew back. Oh, wow. Yep, but, but you and my uh, boyfriend at the time stayed out with my family for a week, and they got acquainted, and... Uh, what part did you play? In, uh, oh, I... I played all sorts of different parts. I was uh, singing and dancing in the chorus, and um, there's a picture of me uh, right over there. Oh, that was... Uh, yeah, that was from uh, Music Carnival Days. Yeah, that was more fun. I never worked so hard in my whole life. Okay. Eighteen weeks playing uh, seven nights except one a week, that's pretty rugged. Yeah, but, okay, that's... Awful. Yeah, there were a lot of, lot of bets on from my pals in New York who said, you know, they were wagering how long I'd last. How long you would last yeah. this? But I, I did it. I fooled them. I did the whole thing and survived. And I never had such an experience in my life. I've never trade that for anything. It was just great. I mean, you know, I, I met all kinds of people. I, cute little 17 years old. I was, I was like Grandma Moses in this group. I was like 29 years old. And they were like 19. I remember one adorable little blonde saying, oh, I said, Muriel, how do you have that beautiful skin with all the cosmetics and stuff we had to put on every night? She said, well, my mother was a stripper, and she taught me how to put on my, my, my good creams and this and that. And so uh, it was just a, an experience to remember. It was so much fun. Yep. Of oh, a lot of characters, that's for sure. Did you meet anybody famous during this time you were doing this? Well, actually I did. We did a, an opera uh, by Douglas Moore in Cleveland, and uh, the leading lady was Beverly Sills. It was called The Ballad of Baby Doe. And, you know, she went on to the Metropolitan oh, yeah. and uh, directed the uh, city center and... Uh, she was a delightful lady. Was she very oh, she was more fun. Very yeah. talented. You oh, at that time. oh yes, she had a gorgeous voice. I mean, she became a metropolitan star. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. For that's many years, yeah. and then became the director of the New York City Center wow. Opera. So uh, that was my one brush with a celebrity. <laughs> 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 oh, well, yeah. you, we we had uh, driven up here. Uh, you and Yarn uh, drove up here, and Yarn stayed for a week after. Uh -huh. left right, and I went back home to work. Right. So there were probably plans at that point mm. for America. Oh no, 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 no. We were just getting to know each other. But he uh, he came to the to the music carnival one night, and I guess I I did see him every night after that. Um, right, we were. 
he, he seemed to like the world of the theater. He'd sometimes go and sleep during the show, and then we'd meet afterwards, <laughs> go out and we have dinner or what have you. Pink, wasn't that one? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> but speaking of our business, we, uh, we did begin a, a business in um, 1976, and he was an electronics engineer, as I said, and had, was involved with two other fellows in Cleveland. And they uh, offered to, they wanted to start a new business in electronics in Florida. So he was the engineer and they moved us down there in 1970. And we started that, everything went fine. But one of the fellows wanted to take all the profits out of the business. So Yarn was the kind who wanted to put them all back in and build it up. So he sold out in 72 and, <coughs> excuse me, we went to Denmark with our girls and looked around for something to import. And we found those little lights right over their counter there. And um, we went into the lighting business and imported them. So yeah. that's how you guys started with the That's lights. how we started with the lights. And I, that's one over there. Yeah. I uh, used to go around the beach. Uh, Pedaling lights. I think you'll probably see them in some of these cottages oh, where you. Every cottage. Right, right. Well, the jo Mary Ann's is, is the, the um, all time maximum number. I don't know. I think she has 13 of them in one. But one summer, I think I sold 76 lights on the beach. So that was <laughs> my all time high. But I had a lot of fun with it. And then in 76, we went into the furniture business into the Danish furniture because Jorn had been all around the country selling lights to the Scandinavian stores and there wasn't one in Fort Lauderdale. So we thought we'd try our hand at importing furniture. And that's what we've been doing since 76. We started it together and I was the bookkeeper, which was most amazing. I'd never even kept a balance in my checkbook. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, I did take a course in accounting. I went to night school and as it turned out that really was what saved me when Jorn died in 1980 because I, I did have some idea of the financial side of the business. And uh, so then Lisa was in school in Denmark and uh, she wanted to come back and be in the business with me. So that's really why I held on and kept it. And uh, now, now then we had several wonderful years together when she graduated from college, and uh, her year in Denmark, she studied international business and uh, economics. So that's uh, the chapter of the business, and we've kept going, and uh, we're doing great. We're still doing a good business, and uh, it's wonderful to keep busy. I, I love working there. I think I'm going to uh, slow down a little bit and spend more time at White Lake beginning next summer. This year I'm only here 26 days. That's not long enough. No. Nope. no. So next year I'm aiming for, for aiming for six weeks. Good. Yeah. Oh, I know. I love the fall. Oh, I do too. That's, That's the best time. So you asked me about my family. Yeah, well, yeah, we, we, we had two, uh, two daughters. Lisa's the older one. She is married to Duffy Peterson, another Good Sylvan Beecher, son of Lucy and Dave Peterson, and the grandson of uh, Art and Jean Children, and they are all involved in with the Howell family. And um, Lisa and her husband and two boys live near Brussels, over in Belgium. They've been there for two years, and uh, Lisa still comes back to work in the store with me for about four times a year. Okay. So she's a officer and still interested in their business. What does Duff do? Duff is uh, an attorney for the Baxter Healthcare International Company. He travels around all over. He's been to Istanbul and every other country around in Europe. He has a, he really enjoys his work. Oh, that's good. So, that's fine mm -hmm. so yes, he is a great young man. Place. Right. Oh, Lisa has uh, taken up uh, tennis and horseback riding and uh, she's enjoying her time there too. Mm -hmm. And Ingrid is uh, now living in Finland with her 
wonderful young man named Marcus Linforce, who's really a world-class sailor. They met in Fort Lauderdale in uh, 92 when the Round the World Whitbread race stopped there. And uh, the reason was they had always had a, a stopover in South Africa, but because of the political situation, they decided they weren't going to go there anymore. And they found uh, another port to fit into their route was Fort Lauderdale. And that was a very lucky day for the Andresen family because uh, Ingrid met Marcus at a party at our Lauderdale Yacht Club. And, uh, well, I must say that when he sailed off to England for the last leg of the race, I really wasn't sure whether we were going to see him again. But <laughs> for fortunately, the romance uh, survived and mm -hmm. they were married last summer in Helsinki. And uh, this July 30th, they are proud parents of a little, uh, a little, I should say, a large uh, nine pound, 10 ounce boy named Carl Matz Linforce. So Ingrid is missing our White Lake this summer, but I'm sure she'll be back. And of course, Ingrid's uh, uh, career, shall we say, <laughs> is in the fabric paintings which she has done a lot of up here at White Lake. And well, she's done a lot of different things. Yeah. Artwork, yeah. Sculptures and art. Yeah, that's right. She has her her uh, metal sculptures out here on our driveway. Well, I've known yeah. her. Every summer she has some new art Yeah, Yep, that's right. Right. Fantastic. So she's our artist in residence. And she started the little Sylvan Beach uh, art fair. Art show, that's right. Every summer. Been going for a few years. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, they didn't have it this summer because I guess she wasn't here to spark plug it. And I was asked about that too, mm -hmm. what was going to occur. So but she'll be back next summer and uh, everybody says, oh, my shirts are wearing out, where's Ingrid? So <laughs> she'll, be, she'll be back here to resupply the beach with uh, hand-painted articles. Great. Yeah. Oh, what, what are the other grandchildren's names? Uh, well, Lisa has two boys, and the older one's name is uh, Jorn, Jorgen Walker Peterson, after my husband and their grandfather. And their younger brother is called Anders David Peterson, after daddy and grandfather David Peterson. David, my grandfather and David Peterson Jr., Duff, in other words. So those are the two boys. Walker uh, this year got painted, didn't he, at the Jinx? Uh, has that come off his face yet? The uh, yes, I think it, <laughs> it's finally worn off. It's, it's taken a lot of baths and scrubbing, but we finally got him cleaned up. He has a lot of tattoos and things that he's put on with his ink painting drawings. So he's, he's, a, he's a character. He is a busy little fella. He gets around the beach very, at a very fast clip. He loves going over and visiting his Grammy and Grampy at Sylvan. He's gonna be because they, they give him cookies and a lot of things <laughs> that I don't give him. <laughs> They're not into health food as much as I am. No, are they? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so he much prefers going there. They are really right. fun stuff. Right. I give him things like carrots. <laughs> sure to please all the characters. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, speaking of characters, uh, what, uh, all your years here, what are some of the most notable characters that you've known that have gone to Sylvan Beach and into White Lake? Oh, my goodness. I suppose the one that uh, everybody knows around here and, 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 and just the beach wouldn't be right without him would be Mr. Joe Pitkin. He's one of the one of the favorites of absolutely everyone around here and golly those jinx I remember so well and you used to come running in there with all and uh, Dick and Jane and oh I couldn't even think of all the wonderful jinx things that you've created and uh, acted in. I, oh I, what I remember now is that old uh, one that there was in Hell's a Poppin' when you used to come in with the plant for Mrs. Hudson. Oh, <laughs> it would start here and then bigger and bigger and a giant tree finally coming in. Well, there are lots of jinxes that I remember. 
Yes. Indeed. Great pleasure. A good now, uh, now uh, just about how many jinxes have you done? Uh, well, that that is a a question you know I can't really answer for sure. I I do know when I started, and that was in uh, 1942, and that would make me 13, and I started playing. I, I I'd really probably just about taken up the bass at that time uh, in our high school orchestra. I was selected for that job because my dad had a bass and was a bass player, and so I had a bass at home. And they said, well. No question, you're please, you're going to take bass lessons and learn how, because we desperately need players for the orchestra. So I had I'd taken many years of piano lessons, and I it was so awful. I hated piano lessons so that the idea of, of playing an instrument with one note at a time was so appealing to me that I said, fine, I'll I'll take it up, and I've I've loved it ever since. Would you like to hear a couple notes? Yeah, well, we can oh, oh. do it on the bass. Well, I, it, you know, it's kind of hard to play a bass solo, but I'll just, I'll just plink a, a couple notes with, for you. I, it's not really in tune. Can you hear it okay? Yeah. Okay, I'll just go. How's that? That's great. <laughs> Thank you. And please notice my very, very, very beautiful bass. And uh, my, there's, uh, uh, you used to have to wrench your bass. Oh, you? indeed. I'll tell you all about that. We, uh, we uh, never had a bass up here before because uh, when Dad died, I moved the bass down to, to Florida. So that that meant after 1970 I had no base up here. So there were a series of people we I rented it from in North Muskegon and all around and then that dear man drowned and his son moved to Florida and that was the end of that base. And then I <laughs> found a fellow who played in a symphony at the Boss Floral and then last summer he moved away and I, I just sort of I, it was, you know, really sort of spoiled the beginning of my summer trying to find that thing. Yeah. So my dear friend Walker McKinney decided that at the age I had reached that I should no longer have to worry about something like that during the summer. So he gave me this beautiful one for my birthday. And that, I tell you, it's made the whole difference in my summer. It's been wonderful. <laughs> Worry about I don't that. have to worry about it, and I have a new beautiful one I can, I can count on. Yep. I started, as I said, in '41 with Dad, my dear Dad Harold Mulder, who played for the Jinx until he died in '62. And Dad was, a, of course, he was a professional musician as an avocation, but he, uh, oh my. Was he we, a friend with Frank Adams and people like uh, that? Yeah, I think he knew him, but I don't. They weren't close or anything, but Dad, uh, he would write out all the bass parts for me. So I had a, a, a music stand of my own and all the bass parts, and he would write an overture with all the bass parts with with uh, one, you know, segueing into another so the keys were all right, modulating, and, you know, Dad was a professional. And professional? Yeah. He, he took pride in his music and he loved playing so. And he, of course, played at the church for all those years uh, for the Sunday service with, with Dr. Hodson. And they were great friends. And Dad uh, wrote uh, the words and music for the Welcome to Sylvan Beach Jinx song. That was Dad's composition. In the, what yeah. year did he write that? Probably? Well, that was early on. I. I it was certainly early 40s, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Yep. So. Uh, what else did he write for the Jinxes? Well, those were that was those his were main contribution, right? He wrote a lot of other uh, popular music, but that was the main Jinx song. So anyway, over the years, we, uh, as I say, Dr. Hodson, you know, Hodsons were great friends, and with our great friendship, or uh, with the church and. Uh, 
Every Sunday morning, Dr. Hudson used to come up to Dad with a list of the hymns, and then Dad would practice them up before the service, and he'd be ready. And of course, he always had his offertory and his music that he played at the church. So uh, we had great, great times with our music together. I guess you did. Right. That's right. great that you had that mm -hmm. experience of all, all, all the right. years with them. That's right. That's right. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really fun to try to carry on that family tradition with my with my little base yeah, here. Yeah, you're all <laughs> right, all right, all right. But but of course, so uh, I miss Dad a lot. Every time I go to the Jinx, I think about all those years. Yeah, the loss of parents. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are uh, through the years of Jinxes? What are some of the changes you've seen in the Jinx? Uh, well, well, I I I think. I think one of the uh, most revolutionary, shall we say, drinks uh, was the one that was uh, based on hair. Remember the Let the Sun Shine In, uh, Peg and, and Tom, no, that was Peg and Tom Leitner. Oh, was it? Oh, yes. And uh, Jane, uh, Peg's sister, did the choreography and Jack Goodman was involved. I will never forget. Do you remember they had the lights? They had lights all around the stage, and they were flashing lights. Right. And they 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 played that number, "Let the Sun Shine In," and all the That's kids right. came in with the long hair and right. all that the hair that. stuff. Oh yes, I uh, that that was a very different and wonderful jinx. I'll never forget. It was just fantastic. Yeah, that was seventy or sixty. Um, I think that was sixty. Sixty-nine. Yeah. Yep. Let the sun shine. And that was uh, Tom and Peg. Yeah, it was Tom and Peg. Right. Okay. Right. In sixty-seven uh, was the happiness is jinx, and that was one where uh, the girls and I sat on a little uh, a double rocker, and we sang together. Uh, Happiness is. That was. Nice wasn't that nice. you? Yeah, you? I don't know yes, that was you and uh, Betsy Davis. Davis. And yeah. I think that was the year that we brought yeah. back Gangway for the Sylvan Beach. Oh, really? Well, here it is. Here. Yeah. They drop it in the 30s or beginning. Of yeah. And then I see here uh, the orchestra was Carol Krauss and uh, myself, and of course, dear, wonderful Earl Lanouette. He was. Oh, such a, a lovely man and uh, was always in our orchestra um, yes. over the years. And I remember in early days uh, there was a, uh, a wonderful trumpet, John Reitz. Remember, John Reitz was a, he was really a professional. He played with big bands, I don't know, Tommy Dorsey and a lot of them. And every summer he would go out in his boat and play just all by himself, play the trumpet. It was always a moonlit night. And I'll never forget those they were at concerts really because oh, he was Oh, it was it was just beautiful. I'll never forget I'm that. Now. Yeah, right. I am too. I am too. He he was just a marvelous musician. So we had uh, we had some mighty good orchestras. Oh, yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah yes, we, mm -hmm. we did. Right. So, Right. So. Well, again, well, back to the, some of the characters uh, at Sylvan Beach and uh, oh. some of the other ones. Well, you know? let's see. Of course, everyone could never, for, you know, Kelly Sellers. He, 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 he is just a man like no one else. A wonderful guy. And uh, no my golly, I was up there the other night. Uh, and he was saying how he climbs those steps every day. Yeah. He climbs He's the steps. Yeah, right. Climbs the steps, you can believe. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, so I telling, guess yeah. that's probably how he stays as yeah. young and chipper as he does. The veins stay yep. soft. Yeah. And another lovely, lovely lady of the beach, of course, is Peg Bendevender. She's just a, a yes, yeah, a grand lady, and I remember her. Her mother, Mimi, 
Mimi McDowell. We used to, Nancy and Barb and Judy, we used to go over to Mimi's house. Uh, we're on, on the uh, White Lake side. And, uh, well, another event I do remember was Barb Van's wedding. <laughs> oh, no doubt about that one. Was with Barb Van. Oh, yes, and, and they served uh, French 75s. And Polly and I were there. I don't think we'd ever had a drink in our lives. And believe me, those were powerful. We, we, that was a memorable occasion. It was fabulous. Yeah, I've heard. Probably <laughs> other people have mentioned that event. That's right. Exciting. Right. Well, let's see. Kelly and, well. And of course, you were Courtney. Courtney Pitkin. He is a marvelous man who. Just saw him at the gas station yesterday. He's still going strong, and all of you, and of course, your grandfather, and uh, all the contributions to the Yacht Club and to Sylvan Beach that all of you have made. It's, that's what makes this place special. so special. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, each generation, here you are. And here I am, and yeah, well, here the well, Hope they, you know, yep, like yep my little, little grandson yeah. are in the drink still. Mm -hmm. Yep, they're carrying on the family, family traditions. I'm, I don't know quite how we're going to do this, but I, I'm trying to talk Lisa into learning how to play the bass. <laughs> <laughs> Single note. <laughs> right, right. It, it, it's so easy. I know that. I know you'd love it. Just a little time out for. Mm -hmm. You want to take a break or anything? Well, no. I'm trying to think of characters. I think those are. Well, oh, oh, another one, of course, is Harriet Pearson. Pearson yes. yes. And, of course, I well remember Moo, her mother, Moo Chittenden, and uh, Loker, and yeah. uh, Harriet, and her husband. And then, of course, the Stewart family, Louise and Sid and Grandfather Stewart and dear Louise is still going strong in the uh, Burroughs cottage there. That's another family, the Burroughs. A long time. Yes, indeed. Very generous mm -hmm. man, Jim Burroughs. I, uh, oh, I adored him. I did, too. Called him Uncle Jim. Uh, he was an incredible yeah. guy. He was just round and jolly and fun and wonderful. Generous and mm -hmm. gracious. Yes, well, there's so many people like that. I hesitate to even mention because I'm afraid I'm going to forget something. Forget something. <laughs> right. Yeah, there are I so many. Exactly. Right. Exactly. They really are. And, of course, a uh, modern-day wonderful, lovely lady is Monty Terryberry, yes. who has certainly carried on the wonderful traditions. The Came so early on and uh, played the piano at the church and done so many good things. And of course, the Hodson family there, still around, and dear Grand Bob, just adored her as well as Dr. Hodson. Yes, they were all wonderful. Yeah. Young, oh, young, doctor, huh? young Bill Hodson. Yes, indeed. Awesome. Now the girls are <coughs> carrying on. Yes, as is everybody. Everybody up here is carrying on. It seems like <laughs> there are any new people, it seems. Is Sometimes there, it's the wrong just... times of the night game. But <laughs> right. But I mean, that's what's so great. They're all, grandfather this was here in 1902 and this and that. Bob Lanier, he's an old timer. And yeah. So many. Yeah, Another one. Incredible yep, source, too. he sure is. Fascinating. All right. Um, back to the jinx. Um, the old lights and the old of Wild Club, did those concern you? The old footlights that every time someone would spray something, the oh. footlights would smoke. Oh, you have any I know. stories about faux pas that were in the oh, jinx, things that dear. happened that shouldn't have happened? Uh, oh, what, what, we, what was that? Well, I, I, oh, let's think. Well, let me see. Well, golly, <laughs> just, just like last Saturday, the last Saturday of the Jinx, that wasn't a faux pas except that I got to the Jinx and I didn't have my glasses. So I had to rip home, it. I timed it, took me eight minutes I can get from the WAP Club here and back. 
in eight minutes. I just made the overture time. Oh but but anyway, that wasn't a major event. Um, let's see. Well, I, another wonderful, wonderful lady. Speaking of the jinx, um, it was Jane Pelton in her canoe. Uh, and in both out in the lake, we used to look out there and see her paddling along. And then she many times did that wonderful act with the uh, paddling the canoe on the stage. She was a dynamic person. Oh, she was just lovely. I remember her parents, even, the old Pelton family. And then, of course, Jeannie Schmidt. My goodness. I mean, you could, you could talk all day about all these marvelous people who have been around here forever. And Do you remember Doug Schmidt's jinxes? Oh, I remember the magic act. Oh, yeah. Oh, the magic yeah. act was so wonderful. And I remember he... Well, it seems to me he, uh, some wonderful magic act, he, I don't know what he was supposed to do, but he would cut Homer Hart's tie right off. I don't know if that was supposed to happen, but it did, and it was so funny. And, <laughs> and oh, another marvelous act I remember was uh, when all the older men had that stomach act where they had, I guess they had bags on their head or something, and they made up their stomachs, stomachs yes. with makeup, and they wiggled. And I remember Jim Rice was so cute, and well, Jim Burrow, yeah, Jim, yeah, Mr. yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Oh, that yeah, was such that a number? great number. And Sam Post, I think, was one with adequate supply of roundness here in the in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, yeah, right. Oh, yeah, that that was a memorable one. But, uh, Do you remember any uh, folk, more folk pilots that were in there? Things well, that happened that, uh, oh, golly, you see, when you're when you're in the orchestra, you're really you're really so concerned with your little little pit down there and what you're doing that uh, I, probably people on the stage would be better versed in what was wrong up there. Mm -hmm. I remember a great number. Uh, that we did, an adult number that I was in, uh, was the one about the alewives. Remember that? Yeah. The alewives, and we were all concerned about those. We, we did, I get, think it was Edelweiss we sang it, it to. Alewives, alewives. <laughs> those were bad days when we had those awful oh, fish on the lake. But, but we survived, and yeah. the beach is, still goes up and down, but it's, Still, <laughs> no alewives on it anymore. Uh, no, no, that's true. Thank God for that. Right, Thank right. That. Do you no. remember a Doug Schmidt doing his famous steam heat number? Do you remember that one? Were you there with the uh, fire extinguishers? We're coming up oh, from the bottom of the stage. Yeah. And one left on the beach that was. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think I do. Uh huh. Was that yep. A oh, that was a big hit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But one I remember as as just so wonderful was the three Van girls in the black uh, face doing uh, "Do I Worry." Remember, they had the the phonograph behind the curtain. Yeah, I don't and, remember. I remember the pictures. Oh I yes, and remember. and they you know they were they were just miming the words and. Uh, then there was a line by a real, real deep bass voice, and Judy Van was about that high, and, and, and she sang the words to that bass part. And it was it just brought the house down. Oh, that was such a cute number. Oh, that's Do cool. I Worry? It was by the Ink Spots. Ink Spots. Mm -hmm. And they were all in blackface. It was so cute. Do you, do you remember what year that was? Oh, no. I, I suppose it's in some Jinx program, but that was probably early on because uh, Judy was just a little girl. Mm -hmm. right? and I remember the cute little Terry Berry girls. Were yeah, adorable. Oh, and then I remember the Gillen girls. Those little things were just adorable little blondes. Do you remember the night that Mimi lost her blouse? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't rem was, was she a, a little? Line, was she just a little? Oh, 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 a kick line number. Yeah, oh, that must have been extremely 
Exciting. Was on the end and the blouse came off. Or, uh, no. The skirt, excuse me, fell off. Oh, the skirt. The skirt. Well, the that's a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, right. Strike that. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and then the curtain went close. Uh, remember oh. the curtains? How the oh, curtains the curtain. Happen? That was just always a disaster. Trying to get those things closed and open. I don't know. I guess they didn't. They must have a new mechanism have, yeah. with a new walk club, of course. Yeah, they yeah, improve that. Of course, all those marvelous new lights they have. They need a whole crew of lighting experts to operate them. Yeah. Okay. Just about. And the sound system. Everything is. Everything's up to date and wobbling. Go. Yeah. That, that was a, a cute number. Yep. Yeah. From uh, Oklahoma. Do you, do you remember? That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember Tim Nuveen's jinxes at all? Oh, uh, well, I certainly remember Tim Nuveen. Um, I guess well, he did some pretty. I'm sure he did some wonderful ones. Certainly remember. Oh, there's another uh, character up here was uh, not only John Nuveen, but Grandpa Nuveen. He was a wonderful man. Can you tell us something about him? Well, he. Uh, he is the one who thought that Sylvan should definitely have a church. When he first came, there was no church. And he used to get uh, visiting ministers from Whitehall and uh, various people to come. And then he, he got Dr. Hodson to, uh, I guess his son John got uh, the Hodsons to move from Moline to Kenilworth to uh, be a minister at the Kenilworth Union Church. And then they got Dr. Hudson to come up to White Lake. He's the first minister I remember. But uh, Grandpa so became a minister too. Right? Yes, uh huh. But Grandpa Naveen was a devout uh, religious man. He was a Baptist, and every morning he went down into Lake Michigan to immerse in the waters. Yes. I gather he was very. Yes. Oh yes. He had a lovely, darling little. Uh, wife, I remember grand, grandmother Nuveen. I remember one time Bill Hudson and I, uh, when we were teenagers, went over to uh, Grandpa Nuveen's for a Sunday lunch. And that was a, sort of a tradition. That various young people would go over and have lunch. He was a lovely man. I gather mm -hmm. it was. It certainly was. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Well, they're still here, and. Reynolds and Mark still here with us. So, here right now. yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yes, she'd be one you should. So many. Yeah. I know. I don't know how you're going to. Well, you'll just have to keep doing this just until 1995. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good uh, thing. You've also been known to be a rather good tennis player. Oh, uh, well, I I have to. Uh, that it's not true, but. I have to admit that I, uh, uh, Jim Lucy and I were the winners of the very first Sylvan Beach tennis uh, tournament, and of course my my husband always uh, here it is nice little Sylvan Beach 1969 with a nice little tree and green ornaments. Uh, I can't even read what the name of the president was. You'll have to read that, Joe. Uh, first annual tennis tournament, mixed doubles, first place. And of course, my husband always said it was because I had Jim Lucy for my partner. And that was probably right. Clark Baird. Well, Jim was on his college team, too. Oh, I know. He was a great tennis player. I just was lucky and got him. And <laughs> we won. Yourself, so. No, no. I sure enjoy it. It's great fun. And I just talked to Jim right before I came. Oh, did you? Uh, uh -huh. he's, he's up here now. Yes, oh yes, I've seen him. I think I saw him at church Sunday. Mm -hmm. Right, oh, and that's another wonderful person who is here is uh, Gil Bowen. Yes. Our yes. new minister at the church. Very kind. Just yeah. a great man who adds so much to our community here. The his homilies. The church is, so oh, I enjoy his messages so much. Wouldn't he's miss a couple books in church. Place, yes, I, books. I have his books. Yeah, mm -hmm. Very lucky to have him coming up from Kenilworth, too.
Who were, uh, back to the uh, tennis players, if I could, who were some of the great tennis players, oh. outstanding tennis players? Oh, well, I, ha I, I have to add someone to that list was a wonderful tennis player and man was Jim Rice. And he was always an inspiration to the He's tennis players. Player. Yes, he was a good player and uh, was such a supporter of the tennis group. Right. And now uh, Father Jim Rice. And uh, of course Ginger, I just played with her this morning. Oh, okay. She's carrying on and Peggy and uh, Izzy Rice. We have great times. Let's see, well, of course, well, of course, the Terry Bears, yeah. they're still playing. Some of the good players, and of course, we have to mention Don Marantet. He's one of the stars up here. Yeah. And of course, John Ehlers and uh, Bill, dear Bill Rogers. How oh, we miss him. He was a mainstay of the tennis Such a kind group. And oh, man, indeed. So Such a, a lovely bird. man. I always. think the. Uh, little wooden memorial is so beautiful that they've made down there where they put the uh, schedule, That's Bill Rogers Memorial. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's right, let's see, tennis players. Uh, those are the main old timers I can the think of. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And you, and you said your first year here you weren't at the uh, Yacht Club a lot, but thereafter you were at the Yacht Club? Yes, uh, I... Spent a lot of time over there. Can you tell us something the, about the junior you know, gang at that time and, and who oh, your peers were, yes. who your commodores were? Well, uh, Dick Dennison was certainly one. Tom Getz and Gordon Ainsworth and uh, well, the whole Getz clan, of course. They were mainstays at the Yacht Club from the beginning of the Yacht Club. Um, let's see, I guess, I think I mentioned most of my peers in the charades group. <laughs> uh, then, then, of course, a very exciting period was when I had my e-boat, the Redhead. And uh, I was uh, lucky enough to have a series of excellent skippers. And they, they included uh, Bruce Stewart and Tom Getz and... Uh, Bill Hodson, and uh, let's see, Doug Partridge was my uh, spinnaker man. He was always the light cell man. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we had, we just had so much fun. We'd go to the regattas around. Um, yeah, the, Were all. the regattas uh, like they are when, like when I was growing up or when when uh, we were kids, you'd go up there and camp out? You know, oh, yes. Oh, just had a uh, best time. Yeah, oh, yes. Crystal Lake was Crystal always Lake. one of the favorites. <laughs> yes. Such a beautiful lake in the first place and so much fun. And Muskegon Lake and uh, Makatawa. Those were the main yeah. regatta Did you ever go up lakes. to Torch? I think I was at Torch one time. Uh huh. We had, we used to have the. Uh, Torch Lake Sailors down here. I remember I have a picture of nose and nose with a, a Torch Lake boat. T2, they were called Turks. Turks. The Turk family. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh huh. Okay, right. comfort. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, back to the Yacht Club. When you were in the Junior Yacht Club, did your meetings occur on Thursday nights? I think they did. Yeah. Wasn't that the traditional night? Yeah, that well, always seems uh, to me. Once Thursday, oh, we used to have so much fun. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example of a typical day when you woke up as a teenager mm. and you went to the yacht club or whatever you did? Can oh, just sure. Just kind of go through a day that was oh, uh, your yes. day. Oh yes. Well, get up. There was no rising time in those days. You just kind of got up when you felt like it. It was delightful, and I uh, always had a dock. And I'd jump into my putt putt. Well, that was in when I had a putt putt. But in earlier days, I used to walk to the yacht club. That was when I guess the lake must have been a little lower or something. I don't know. But there were some marsh lands and stuff. But I could get all the way over to the yacht walk club. Uh huh. And then we'd uh, be people milling around in and out. And uh, well, of course. The fun times were when there were races, and 
probably I'd get on the W-10, Polly's boat, and we'd set off and go out in the sea race and just have a great time. Uh, one, one day I remember very clearly, I had, I arrived late for the patrolling of the race. That was a fun thing to do too, was go out in the patrol boat. Well, I'm not, I can't quite remember who the skipper was, but they, the patrol boat was right just about leaving the dock. And uh, they, I just walked out the front door of the yacht club and they said, oh, come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up, we're going out to start the race. So I ran down the dock and jumped on the boat and uh, almost instantaneously the hatch blew up, fire came out of the jets, and I was thrown into the water. The boat had just been gassed up and they hadn't taken time to air out the hatch. So I luckily landed in the water. I had uh, blisters all over my face, uh, second, well first, no, third degree on my face, but uh, second degree on my fingers, which were on the side of the boat where the jet uh, fire came out. I had a hole in the seat of my blue jeans. Good. And uh, but that, that was uh, one of the days I remember very clearly, but luckily nothing that scarred me for life or anything. Okay, but, so but that, that was an exciting day, of course, but sure. other days, uh, just, oh, going up into the ballroom and playing the jukebox and uh, then probably going up and have a sailing school lesson. And, uh, you know, Who were some of your sailing school teachers? Well, my first sailing school teacher was Jim Butterfield. And I guess I have the diploma up there. I, I don't, that was probably 42, I think. It's up there, whatever. And then, uh, then I went back to sailing school to refresh my sailing skills, and Tom Getz was the instructor then. Okay, so there were only two years at that time. So, uh, oh, no, th there weren't two years. I just went back okay. again. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, no, they, it was just a one-year program. Do you have any mm -hmm. or memories of sailing school? Did anybody ever turn the boat uh -oh. over? To oh, of course. Day? Absolutely. Oh, Did sure. Did teachers get mad when you mm. did that? Or? Oh, no, they were pretty patient. Jim was very patient. <laughs> Tom was maybe not as patient as Jim, but we just had a lot of fun in sailing school. Yeah, I think he had to be, uh, well, yeah, I don't know how yet. I was 13, so I was old enough. I think he had to be 12 or something. Now that I guess they're lowering the age. Yeah, yeah, some sort of yeah, yeah it would be 11 or something, I don't know. But, of course, my girls both went to sailing school and took my, more than the one year. And then they, uh, another character up here, shouldn't forget, is that marvelous swimming man, Red Harris. Not he, enough can be said. That is right. He taught them swimming and life-saving and all of those things that uh, are so necessary up here. Lines, Indeed. An uh, inspirational yes. person. Yes. Yep. Probably one of the greatest men mm -hmm. you'll ever meet. Right. That's certainly true. And I understand he's still there. He's still there. Yeah, and I'm absolutely. hoping he'll be there next year so Walker can take swimming lessons from him. Too. Yeah. He's such a, a blessing to yep. us all. He's an inspiration. Um, another uh, character, do you remember very well Joe Sedoni? Well, he, uh, my, as I mentioned, first of all, uh, my uncle, uh, Fred Morford and Aunt Glenda, they were good friends of the Sedonis. And I, I went over there one time with them, but I would certainly not classify myself as a friend of the Sedonis, but, but I, I remember of course, hearing all about him and you know, what, uh, what was the impression you had when oh, you he, went there? Oh, it was just an aura yeah, about the place. Oh, I mean, it was, was, uh, it was like a, a mystic, a man who could tell your fortune and things of that nature. People really, I guess, came from Chicago all and all, from all around. Yeah, to uh, 
Rathbone. To have him, really? Oh, Basil Rathbone. Yeah, I did Arch Sidoni a month ago. Oh. I went through some. Oh, goodness. I mean, Basil Rathbone. They're looking at all these people. Yeah. Charlie really? Chaplin. There are pictures. Ooh. And with they came Charlie up Chaplin. here? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks. Oh. Honeymoon at the Sidonis. Uh, really? Yeah, Douglas. Yeah. I did not yeah, know about the, that. Uh, I knew. Joe Crawford, Sophie Tucker, Basil. Oh, well, I do remember uh, in connection with the jinx of Sophie Tucker coming up here. And oh, did she, did she appear in the jinx? Well, I, I, I think so. I thought Frank Adams got her up here to uh, be in the jinx. I, I wasn't around, but uh, that's, yeah. I, uh, that's great. Well, I know. You'll have to check it out, yeah. I guess. <laughs> it might just be uh, Sylvan Beach lore. I don't know. <laughs> but her name has definitely been mentioned as someone who who came up yeah, from Chicago. So yeah, very mm -hmm. very right. Mm -hmm. many times. Yep. Do you remember anything when you met Joseph? Just when you went there, did you no. go to his No, home? I don't really remember. It was just, uh, what was it called? The Pines the Valley of the Pines. Valley of the Pines, yes. Do you remember Jack DeFraga at all? I certainly remember hearing it. In fact, uh, in early days, uh, Jack DeFraga is the one who used to uh, do the beautiful calligraphy on, on our uh, sailing school diplomas. Yes. And my cousins who were older knew Jack DeFraga, but I, I didn't. I didn't yeah. know him. Was he a, well, he was a sailor, I guess. Right, he was he? a fantastic yeah. sailor. Uh -huh. originally from Grand Haven. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, then, of course, Staling, what about ha Harry Pellinger? Okay, yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Now, there is a real character. Yes, yes. Wonderful yes. guy. Fine. So, uh, I mean, there's so many up here. You, yeah, no, you, you just got to keep talking to your all the others, Joe, to get them all. Do you remember any junior commoners that were outstanding to you? Oh, well, I, can, I, I, rem, I remember Midge Bain, as a matter of fact. I don't even know if she's still around, but uh, she was one of the early ones. And, uh, well, I think Tom was Commodore and Dick Dennison. And Dick was very kind. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's still around. And it's so great to yeah. have him still here and in good health these For days. Oh yes, of course. Yeah. Jack Dennison. But Dick right. Is dead. No, no, Dick's here. Who's Dick and Dennis? Kathy. Oh, you thinking of um, Denny. Yeah, the other one. Denny. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Excuse Denny. Me. Oh. Yeah, Dick's excuse. Yeah, right. Yeah. He's a young fella. He's just my age. <clears throat> yeah, I got you confused. Mm-hmm. And of course the Den old Mr. Dennison. Yeah. Another wonderful. Colorful. Here, yeah. Character around here, way up on the little cabin on the top of the hill there. So yes, indeed. Right? Yeah, Secretary Treasurer, I think, is still on the beach. Oh, I'm sure he was probably everything in his day. <laughs> <laughs> Who are some of the sailors? Uh, not necessarily the well, best, I but think the outstanding sailors, male and female. Well, um, in, in my day, you yeah, mean? Yeah. 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 And in your opinion, well, overall. Mm, Oh, well, of course, no one can touch old Mr. Youngquist. Yeah. He was the dean of sailing and a boat designer, the Y flyer that so many of the young people learn to sail on. Who were the females that were good sailors? Well, Mitch Bain was one, and Barb Wasson. She was another. Boy, she, she was a sailor. She, uh, remember, she and Neil Manny were sailing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is he a nail? Mm-hmm. Yep. And, uh, oh gosh, all the Denisons and Pitkins and everybody. And, and another wonderful man was Leonard Shatton. Leonard Shatton, yes. Our yeah. staff photographer. Yeah. All of our teenage years, we have this huge collection of fabulous pictures I bet you do that he, he took. I'll have to Bring them out sometime and show you. I was just mm -hmm. reading in 1959 Yacht Club News uh, that they talked about Mr. Shadden doing the Jinx pictures. Uh -huh. See, so it just turned 79 and there he was climbing up the 12th. Oh, I know it. 
we, we have to start that up again, Joe. Yeah, we need I Jinx pictures. Ah, yeah. Always dress rehearsal night was uh, picture yeah. night. Yeah. And, then, and then they'd have them up at the post office and you'd yeah. make your selections. I didn't and realize that that had stopped. Well, yeah, yeah. It's not good because those pictures are worth Oh, they're thousands. priceless. They are gems. Absolutely priceless. Ooh, uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. No. Um, just a, uh, what, do you remember any summer romances that were very big, oh. beautiful, outstanding? Oh, oh my. There were so many. <laughs> Get Every summer we... You know, we will miss you when the summer is gone. That we um, would write over the summer. Well, golly. Uh, <laughs> well, I remember I went out with Bruce Stewart for a few summers, and that's when I became friends with all those that wonderful family. And oh well, there was. Uh, I remember Jean Josephson and uh, Ward Pearson. They were an item. They were the item. Yes, long ago. And then uh, Polly and Cam Johnston. And uh, this was long ago. Polly had cancer. Yeah, unfortunately. And Dwayne and Polly were an item too. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I guess Tom Getz and I were friends for a while. And also Gordon Ainsworth was a dear old beau of mine over the years. And Barb Getz was Tom's love from some summers. I mean, we that was a great thing. Just because you were someone's boyfriend, girlfriend one summer, then very often we just switch around. Sounds like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things haven't changed a lot. Right, now. right, right. right. Uh, what was the... Uh, when you came to White Lake, what mm -hmm. was the first thing you did when you got here? Did you did you run to the channel? Did you run out front? Did oh, you have anything that when you were... I suppose uh, I would r run and see the pals around. Okay. Yeah, that was always the exciting thing to do. See who was here, who was at the beach. Yeah. Of course, living so nearby, um, we would come out right after school closed in June and uh, <laughs> then go back when school started. Maybe come out a few weekends afterwards, but pretty much went back home when school started. Okay. Uh, speaking of that, when you describe White Lake or the jinx to the people at home that never were here, your <laughs> friends, oh, how did you do that? It's hard to do. <laughs> You just can't, it's the spirit of this place. You, you, you can't, well, you know, it's a lake with uh, boats that all of us sail. And uh, we, I mean, the jinx is the hardest thing to yeah, explain. I mean, you say, well, we have an annual show where everyone, it's kind of like a talent show, and it just sounds awful to someone in Florida. Oh, no, right, I'm so boring. But for us, it's so wonderful because all our, Kids and grandchildren are in it, and uh, yeah, it, you know, it, it's. I think it's just a community spirit and uh, the the tradition that is here that we all are eager to to carry on and uh, have have, a, have 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 this wonderful place for our children and for their children. Exactly. And your family certainly oh. illustrated that. My goodness. Clarence Pitkin, my goodness, he was like the starter of the yacht club long, yeah, long ago. Oh, indeed, absolutely. Now well, here you're carrying on all those traditions of the beach. And the uh, oh, the fire engine coming down there for the kids and the the jinx and it's just a great place where everyone gathers in the potlucks and the the uh, Fourth of July gatherings and these things are what we do every summer and it's uh, so special. Do you have any smells that come to mind? 
Oh, yes, uh, uh, the woods. I think the woods. I love the evergreen smell. Every summer I have to trim my juniper bushes, and I always accumulate mountains of these cuttings. And, oh, I love the aroma of that juniper. Are there any smells that remind you of your childhood? Well, I, I think probably some, some kind that, that musty yes. smell. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you first get up here and you Open yeah I and mean, you haven't aired it out yet that sort of a White Lake smell yeah that mm -hmm. was mine too mm -hmm. you learned to love yeah right and, and also mothballs Moth too that <laughs> that reminds me of uh, right. of the cottages yeah did you live your school year just to be at White Lake well it was certainly something I look forward to every summer. Yeah, you couldn't wait. Just couldn't wait to get up yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, there right. is a magic. There is a magic. Mm -hmm. There is a magic. I think there always will be. Um, you know, you mentioned your base here, and I guess we should have done this when we were on the base. Uh, uh, you used to rent the bases and things like mm -hmm. that, right? Do you have any memory where the base didn't? Uh, almost arrive or anything? Oh, there were some close calls. Oh, that's why you were Oh, all that yeah. Time. Oh, sure. I remember one time uh, the fellow who had the base must have worked at the Muskegon Chronicle. And <laughs> I think it was Irene Pearson who somehow picked up the base at the Muskegon Chronicle to get it up here in time because some time, some summers, I would arrive like the night of dress rehearsal because I, w I wasn't able to be up here very long and so I would always time my arrivals so it had to be at jinx time and uh, I mean crazy things like that. Other people oftentimes would, would have to pick it up for me and go here and there and return it for me because I wouldn't be time and this and that so yeah I've had a lot of uh, oh yeah, that, that's what happened last summer, that, that fellow at the Boss Floral, he moved out of town and that was, that was the last line I had on a base. That was a sad day. But, oh, that so that's why it's so wonderful nice to have uh, yes. him. And, it, and it's supposed to survive the winter without warping. It's a, it it's a plywood it. base, yeah. It's kind of, you know, an inconvenience to ask someone to keep your base over the winter. <laughs> Cottages aren't always that big, and there aren't that many people who stay up here all winter long. And it, a, a regular wooden carved base uh, can't take the cold, cold that would would be in this cottage, but for instance. Good. Well, I'm praying, I'm hoping, padding it, and hoping it will survive. Well, if you get too mm -hmm. concerned, I could always keep it at the place that I'm at. Oh, well, yeah. you're kind, but that's why I bought this, or why I was requested this kind as uh, it's supposed to survive the winters. Do you have any memory of the Silver Beach Hotel? No, I don't. Mm -mm. Of the arcade? I, I, I was talking with someone about that, that I thought I remembered the little shops and the post office and stuff, but then we figured out that I think it was gone before I got here in well, 42. 42, I was think our, it was still here. Was it? But it was torn down soon after. Well, then I, I sort of remember Remembered. walking think, yeah, on it, right. but no clear memories, because I was only 13. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's your first memories, yeah. too. Yeah. Like right. Mm -hmm. uh, what right. was, all through the years, what was the most notable or biggest storm that you can Oh, my goodness. What you? Well, I remember one, uh, uh, I remember being over on the Michigan side, and the, oh, the waves were so big, and on the end of a pier was a boat that got washed up and was sitting on the pier. That, that was a big one. It was a cruiser, a cruiser. Golly, I don't remember, but I bet you a lot of those Sylvan people would know that. There was a cruiser that just got washed right up and was sitting on the pier. That was kind of an odd sight. Mm. Yeah. But there have been so many big ones. We had a big one the other night. And the lightning was flashing and it was 
beautiful. It's, I love watching the storms from up top. Yeah. See the lightning flashing all over the lake. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is a nice place for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, do you, uh, do you have anything to add or any thoughts about well, some of these? Well, golly, anything? I think I've said about going about as far as we can go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you're so. right. Uh, well, it's, it's just I a thank wonderful you place. Very much for your time. Well, you yeah. are most welcome. And if there's anything it's been you fun. Add or think All about right, anything, just I, give me a call I will certainly do that, Joe. Yours and, uh, thank you very much. I will much certainly for your time do it. It was my pleasure. I can't imagine there's anything that I said would be any. Anyway, um, okay, I'll have a little sip of iced tea. Tell us about your romantic life up here. Oh, I did that. Um, one chapter in our cottage here was was the was our road. It it is a it it is a mile uh, long coming in. So. Of course, we didn't didn't have the road during the war, but immediately afterwards, and I remember it was a lady contractor who built the road. It was kind of a roughneck person, but anyway, she did a good job. And uh, every once in a while, uh, Dad would need to get a load of gravel put in, just as I do. I had a whole new road done a few years ago. So anyway, one time Dad had a new. <laughs> A load of gravel put in, and, and this meant that the upper, the, you know, the middle part of the road got very, very high. And so I was coming in on a date. I think it was it was Gordon and Tom um, in the car, and and we were driving in, and, and they said, "Oh, watch out! Stop the car! There's Mr. Mulder. He's shoveling gravel on the road." <laughs> Dad. Dad had forgotten that I was out, I guess, and, and suddenly realized that I was coming home, and he was trying to kind of level out the gravel on the on the road, <laughs> so, so that we could drive in. And ever after that, uh, our road was called the Burma Road. Yeah, the Mulder's there. Road was the Burma Road after that, right? So that that's all the story of the Burma Road. That's great. It was kind of a funny sight. Did you have any funny <laughs> dating experiences up there? Did you ever have any? Oh. <laughs> well, I, I already told about that. No, I, I, no, I, I <laughs> there were just so many wonderful parties and dates. And, of course, every Saturday night, dance at the Yacht Club. That was a must. We never, we never missed those, those nights, and it, it's too bad now. The young people, you know, the teenagers, they don't go over there for the dances anymore, do they? No, uh, just yeah. like we're saying that people don't yeah. sing anymore. But I mean, I remember going to the yacht club like maybe that first summer with my mom and dad, and a, and a lot of all my buddies did the same. You'd go with your family, yeah. and then we'd all we'd all dance together and. And then, the and then, oh yeah, the square the dances, yeah. they were so yeah. much fun. Did they, yeah. did they still have those square dances? No. No. Well, maybe the Schillers isn't around anymore, whatever. But those were great fun. And then, of course, when we did start having dates and, uh, but we were, we were always in, in a big group. It was just great. Wow. Yeah, yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what's the most fun. About. That's right. And always, and always cutting in and, you know, mingling around and... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. romance every summer. Yeah, oh else. yes, new romance every do you, summer. Do you remember any Pirates Ball in particular? Oh, yes, they were so much fun. Well, I, oh, I remember, uh, I remember going with Bill Hodson one year, and he, that was the year he had his back operation, and he had to wear this corset which was kind of unusual. And uh, yeah, that, that was, well, I, there are so many pirates' balls. I remember uh, going, uh, well, with lots of different people. And I remember we, we had those great pictures. Remember they used to take pictures the at the pirates' ball. Yeah, yeah and they're over there. Oh, uh, well, after that, because, oh, yeah. uh, right. I remember being in a picture with uh, Joe and Doug Partridge. We were all decked out. 
I had a costume because my mother and I were in the ice skating club in, in Muskegon. And they, one year they did the Pirates of Penzance number. And that was so wonderful because every year we had a pirate's costume. We'd go up in the crawl space above the kitchen in the, in the old cottage and pull out the old costumes and put on our big hats and our big swords and our little skirts. And it was great fun because we always had a pirate's costume. And at the end of the summer, too, made it yep. especially important. Yes. Oh, yes. Pirate's Ball was the highlight of the summer, summer season. Yeah. 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 That was the nice. end. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, thank okay. you very much. Well. well, you are most welcome. Why don't we go over to Peterson's and, and feel out Dave and see if he missed it? Because we could do it. I mean, it's just a puppy. Oh yeah, I mean, I get it. Yeah, hold that up and be good. Um, okay. Well, it's handwritten by the director. There you go. By the director of the Chinks. Let's see what I can. Remember when the backdrop was that big clown? Mm-hmm. Yep. This thing is really amazingly good camera yeah. for that. It really picks up. Yeah. Matter of fact, when I turn the light on, I get too much sometimes. So There's the old uh, Jack DePrega series uh, school. Oh, my, my name God. written in that beautiful He was something else. He had a lot of good stories about Quite the sailor, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? That's out there? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I bet you're right. That is something. That is um, like thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I saw that thing out in his lawn, and it's just it's incredible. Forty-seven. I think I sang "Who Do You Love?" I hope, oh, and I also wow. sang "I'm Old Fashioned." Wow, forty-seven. Oh wow. I suppose I was eighteen. No, 
That was in college days. Because that was the year Dad was Commodore of the Yacht Club. And there's the old crew of the Redhead. Oh, wow. Dick Dennison. Dick Dennison, Doug Partridge, and Bill Hudson. That was a Leonard Shadden cover of the Yacht Club News. That one of you there? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that old news. I mean, I we have that. Old timer. That's <laughs> interesting. This is uh, the year I was born. And this picture here of you was when you were in Cleveland That's at right. the, uh, the music carnival, music summer car stop. stop. <laughs> now this top picture up oh, here. Oh, that's long ago when we lived in Miami. This lovely one is a watercolor by Monty Terryberry of our oh, you're chalet sure. here. Yeah, it's taken from the, painted from the top of the she was telling me yesterday about her painting. Oh, she's yes. something else. Beautiful. She's very talented. Oh, beautiful. There's one of Graham's This is an amazing piece. This is a photograph that Ingrid took of Little Walker and Duff. That is oh, really wow. a prize winner. Ingrid took that. Yeah. That is excellent. Isn't it wonderful? Oh. Really? <laughs> that is. Yeah. Looks like somebody came down from heaven. Well, he certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes true and sometimes not. Yeah. Hey, he is going to be. That walker is already a, a really. A already. He is. He's only he four is. years old. And he's got a smile, though, all the time. He's a good character. He's, yeah. not, a, he's not a malicious. No. Uh, He's good. Busy guy. Really so what? Oh, there's We'll get the old. Fifty years, and we'll know what the ice box looked like. You know, from one. 
Oh, that, is that the old? Uh, yeah, with the fish on it. Do you, do you still have your car? Yeah. The station wagon? Oh, you mean the bomb? Yeah. Of course. You know, I have 